It is time that we stop and we declare this pandemic emergency over. And the truckers of Canada had a gut feeling and some really good common sense that this has to come to an end. And the problem is that by coming to the population, the population needed to understand that they are backed by solid science. And that is where people like myself, Dr. Hodkinson, Dr. Poness, etc., have come forward. Because we know 100% of the science is behind the trucker. The Canadian trucker is backed by solid, solid science, not the government positions. That these, these vaccine mandates have no scientific or medical basis and must be stopped now. The mandates must be lifted tomorrow. The carnage that's going on out there with our children is indescribable. As Dr. Alexander stated, the evidence medically is overwhelming. I'm not going to list it at this moment. All I am saying is that there's a degree of exasperation that the world must understand listening to this. Canada has been put forward as the epicenter of a major change in how things are run. It's going to transform the usual institutions of politics, of medicine, of law, and the media in ways that we cannot predict. But major changes are coming. And not only that, but we are being watched. We are seeing democracy challenged. And the Chinese are watching us. Make no mistake, this is a moment in history where there's a tremendous amount on the table. Not just vaccination schedules, but the very existence that we want our children to inherit. With that said, I would like to pass over to Jeff. my friend here, Jeff, as to what's happening on the ground tonight here in Ottawa. Thank you. Thank you. I know that the mainstream, sorry, the legacy media has been putting out all sorts of information, states of emergency, riotous activity, unruly, unlawful gatherings of people in this city right now. If you are attuned to that, it may bring anxiety, it may bring stress, it may heighten fear or concern for loved ones that maybe you know are here supporting this. But we assure you, this entire organization, it's not just a movement, it is an organization of dedicated, focused individuals who are standing unwavering. There are no ruffled feathers in this room or amongst this team. We have worked with local law authority and government to keep this exactly what we have intended it to be. It is a peaceful demonstration. We have complied by opening up access routes on every road that we have accessed or parked on with trucks and support vehicles. That was done to ensure that EMS would be able to respond to the concerns and the safety of the citizens of Ottawa and also the safety and any concerns of the people who are here supporting this movement. We have worked repeatedly with law enforcement agencies to try to bring humane conditions to the people that are peacefully demonstrating. Washroom facilities, maintenance of those washroom facilities, and we have yet to get a solidified response to bring those deserved conditions to this peaceful demonstration. We are currently going to see legacy media streaming images of the police making arrests. They're currently treating this now with catchphrases, occupation, terrorism, and all sorts of very low level commentary to try to sway people's opinion. They're currently out in the streets of Ottawa and they are arresting people on charges of mischief for transporting fuel in proper containers in order to supply the people here for a peaceful demonstration to allow their vehicles to stay warm. If you've been following the media, the real media, the one you're watching right now, 
These are families. They have children with them. They have no intention of reacting negatively to anything that is going on. This is peace, it is love, and it is absolute unity. Absolute unity. There is nothing wrong with that. It is our right. So it brings all levels of consideration, which I'm not going to expand on right now, because that is not the purpose. My intention is to assure those supporters, the truckers, the community of Ottawa, and all other citizens that are involving themselves with helping pass this message that we must keep the foundation solid. We must not waver with the falsehoods that are being put upon us right now. It is going to be an anxious experience. It is going to be tense if you are out in the street right now trying to aid your fellow man, woman, or family to keep them comfortable and fulfill their needs while we continue to demonstrate until we're acknowledged. But it is essential that we keep the same message. It is peaceful. It is unified. We will not have shows of violence at all towards law enforcement, and we must understand they are doing their job. <coughs> they are doing their duty to protect the citizens. Though we may not agree with the actions that are being taken, we will not resist. We will not become violent. We will not act out. And my advice to those who are sitting in their trucks continuing to support what we know is right. We are here for you. We have a legal team. If you are charged or arrested for any reason, my best advice at this point is to be calm, with zero comment, to comply with the instruction given to you with the officer that is engaging you. If they ask you to put your hands behind your back, simply do so. No gestures, no comments, no nods. Simply follow that instruction and be peaceful about it. I personally, if confronted with this, will take the advice of the kindergarten teacher of my five-year-old son that I miss so much and want to be with. And I will crisscross applesauce and I will sit down and I will not move on the street. And I would suggest you consider that as a very effectful way, effective way, pardon me, to approach a situation that has clearly spun out of control through leadership that has tried at every single corner to disarm the voice of patriotism, unification, democracy, and freedom. That's all I have to say at this point, but we are with you. Please be calm. We will endure. We will not leave. I would like to pass it over to Tom. Good evening. Thank you to all of you who have uh, tuned in. I just want to say shortly that I just returned from Coventry. Coventry, for those of you who don't know, is one of our major uh, locations that we have a lot of families, a lot of trucks. We have a lot of supplies. We have extremely high morale. Uh, approximately two hours ago, Ottawa police have uh, showed up in a, in a very aggressive show of force. There was uh, probably over a hundred police officers in uh, tactical gear with snipers on the roof. And I'm very pleased to report that all of our truckers, all of our families kept their composure. It was extremely peaceful. They came in, they took the fuel, which was their intent. Their intent was to come in, confiscate the fuel that we have, that was donated or purchased to be distributed for the trucks. However, I'm pleased to say that that has no impact on our ability to continue operations whatsoever. Mm -hmm. It was absolutely inconsequential, and I would offer that I believe it was a very critical mistake on their part. It had no impact on our operations, but it certainly raised morale within the, the uh, occupants, or I, excuse me, the people that are at Coventry. And I'm not gonna take a bow, but I'm very, very proud of the way our truckers conducted themselves. 
peacefully. There were two arrests for two people that uh, failed to provide identification when asked by an officer, so they were arrested. And if that's the worst that can happen tonight, I'm very happy with that. In fact, I'm very proud uh, of the way all of our people conducted themselves. And so we have a lot of support. So for you tuning in at home, just know that so what, they took a little bit of fuel that we're going to replace. It has no impact on what we're doing. It's inconsequential what they've done. It was a drastic show of force. Tomorrow, I will be making a public statement to outline what we believe to be a very measured, reasonable way forward. We believe it to be responsible. We believe it to be safe. And we would like to make that statement tomorrow to try to get interested parties to a negotiating table. So please tune in to that tomorrow. We'll, we'll provide some more details. And I'd like to say something for everybody's understanding. This is not a police solution. There is no policing resolution to this. This is a political solution. The chief of Ottawa police cannot give us what we want. The prime minister of Canada, he has the power to do that. His cabinet has the power to do that. The government of Canada has the power to end this. They need to sit down and talk with us. Tomorrow I will make a public statement on how we believe we can come together and make that happen. Thank you. If I could add one more thing to the viewers that are tuning in on whatever live feed you're watching from now, please take the time to share this message to everybody in your network. I believe that we should be uh, letting Joseph talk for a moment. Something that all Canadians and all politicians have to be aware of. This is the nation's capital. Ottawa is not just a city in Canada. This is the nation's capital. capital. And as citizens of the country, we've been working for two years to get the truth out to the Canadian people. And it took the truckers to create a platform that's allowing these doctors, these brave and doctors that are speaking truth about si the truth in science, uh, we can... Canadians owe a deep debt of gratitude to all the truckers, so to the degree that you can support the truckers, please find a way to donate to the truckers. But never forget here, this Ottawa, to the citizens of Ottawa, you are in the nation's capital. There is no disrespect to you, to the citizens of Ottawa. But, but please remember, you, are in, we, you live in the nation's capital, and as Canadians, I'm from Saskatchewan, I have a right to be here. I pay taxes in this country, and our government is violating the law. They have been for two years now. And so we have a right to make our voices heard. So never forget that. This is Canada. This is the nation's capital. So Canadians, stand up with us. Stand up for your God-given rights and freedoms.